Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup by Smash Cast TV. We are here in the first match of the day between Wheel Wreck while whistling and Mind's Eye. A best of two that will decide who gets those two valuable points and advance a bit further in the group stages. Of course, we are here once again in the Pro Dota Cup American version sponsored by XBet. If you want to bet on your favorite Pro Dota Cup team, I would like to recommend to you our proud sponsor, XBet. XBet offers live betting in all Pro Dota Cup matches and offering the best odds and the highest payouts. When with XBet, use bonus code Bounty X to deposit and get 100 euros free. That said, guys, we will be moving on to the draft very shortly. Before we do so, allow me to present myself. My name is D Swordfish, and I'll be joined today by Vate. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, everyone. And uh, it was pretty surprising that Mind's Eye managed to play this game now. As far as I understood, they should have played the Cold League. Yeah, yeah. it is weird. But... So I guess they postponed the game or something like this. They should have played against Team Wolf. But let's go for the, our game, the Pro Dota Cup. And Will Require Whistling started with Earthshaker and Crystal Maiden. Pro probably Earthshaker is position 3 on the off lane. Derp Derp with his semi-famous <laughs> Crystal Maiden. Going to be position 5. Whom you see as a position uh, 4 or what do you think they're going to pick now? Right now for wheel, I mean, you have a lot of possibilities. Usually you want to get a, if you get a position four that can roam for wheel, maybe something. We have seen like the earth spirit the kind of fashion for that. It's nice stalker or clockwork would have been elves. Absolutely a conk. Ooh, doom. Okay, so that could be an air shaker position for doom in the B as doom jungle will be quite weak. In but they did run this yesterday, I believe. Yeah, it was, no, not yesterday, two days ago. <laughs> so they did a pretty good job with the doom. They actually ran it in the in position three, and and it ended up working quite well for them. They tried to favor this hero quite a lot, going for a very tank build of the 275 health, going for the Midas early, and just trying to tank up with the hero as a utility. Combined with an Earthshaker, in fact, Earthshaker Crystal Man's a pretty nice ganking duo. You can use the jungle both both the offlane and the lane jungle with the doom and crystal skin. A very nice combo and also a good way to stop people like Warlock or Sanking, especially the Warlock, as the doom is a very effective counter to that heat. Preventing his golems from counter initiating anything. Now, mind's eye, we have two supports already picked up, and of course they're off laner. See now for the last two. Harry and a. Mm, so it's some kind of a. I would say that it's some kind of a classic uh, five man uh, lineup. Uh, for the mind's eye, probably I would expect something. Hmm. I'm not even sure about this one, but. You might say I'm insane, but... Razor. Oh, actually, Razor. I would say something like an SF for Mind's Eye. Could have been good, but he's quite weak against Earthshake and Crystal Maiden. Yet with uh, Razor, probably they need some kind of an, another lockdown like Puck, which is not banned yet. It will w work out pretty well with Epicenter plus Warlock and Razor. Can deal quite a lot of damage with his uh, ulti and with uh, Plasma Few. So it also keeps people in place, so they can't really run away to break up this, uh, break this static link. Yet, I'm not sure. It feels like they lack a bit of physical damage now, and they need to survive to till the moment they get their some kind of a core items on uh, Razor and Legion Commander, probably on tanking also something like a Blink Dagger, and level six on Warlock. Without their ults, they are not that strong, sadly. Ah, uh, that uh, Inker pick now to add some. Uh... Razor not the best using laser, but definitely powerful with the missile. Razor's gonna suffer a lot against the March of the Machine, especially early on, maybe forcing him into a hooded defiance build to just withstand damage. Razor was actually a really good pick against low armored heroes like Doom. Earth Shaker has a bit of a harder time against Tinker as the mid game progresses as long as Tinker has a nice progression. And now mind Zai, assuming this Razor is gonna be played in the carry position as he is, needs to pick up a, a mid that can at least stop this Tinker's farm from the very beginning. Wap would be quite good. Wap would you make? Still in the pool and still very thick, especially because well, Doom is not that easy. not gonna have the easiest time stop uh, trying to do Wap, especially with the Razor finishing him off so quickly. Doom cannot actually not quack so so uh, close. Team is gonna be dueled or just destroyed by Razor's damage. So and I not many options really left uh, for lane domination. You can go for a Viper, go rather uh, than. Uh, they bat out the storm. I wouldn't like the storm. I mean, if you're gonna go for something that's against the Doom, might as well go. Fuck. 
Yeah, but I guess uh, Storm is to the purpose of catching up to Tinker really fast. Right, in the mid league. Yeah, it may have worked out. Yeah, Tinker is not the most popular hero for Wildrek while whistling. Last time they played it six months ago in the competitive scene, and I haven't seen I Annihilate playing that much on this hero, so it feels like team is a little bit experimenting. Probably that was their setup all along, and they just don't didn't reveal their strats. I mean, they they have been experimenting in these past couple of days. We saw Monkey King carry for the well, carry, not even off lane, like, a bunch of other weirder strats, especially playing against teams that I can imagine they could be weaker because they're lower points on the table, like my eye or ours. But these kind of uh, experimental setups have actually drawn them back in the last game as they lost because of against stars. Now wheel with their last pick, that being the. Carry. Assuming Doom is not going to be the carry. They're going to go for the Earth. Uh, decent hero against Razor. Pretty good against Legion of Manor before the Blade Mail. And even though Warlock is very strong against the Earth, they have the Doom to counter Warlock. So that could work really nicely. Also, I have li nice lanes. And Ursa can self sustain. So the quick on the jungle. Pretty pretty nice lineup overall. We'll experimental, yes, but not too far off. Now, what could be the last pick? Uh, I'm, I'm going for the Quap here. The Ursa's. I would say Puck, to be honest, because shutting down Ursa and not letting him catch up to catch up to anyone would be really good. You can't deal with Puck, especially when he will get his kind of an Aghanim Scepter. There are two controls over BKB, actually even three, I guess, with the Legion Commander also, if you can uh, count that. And as far as I remember, Dual Pierce is uh, BKB. But pick of an Ursa already gives a little bit of space for both supports from side of uh, Will. Crystal Maiden can go jungle, can also gank with the Earthshake. Uh, Ursa should do fine against Ninja Commander on his own. Yet probably Mind's Eye support so will use that quite a bit because they got a decent ganking uh, possibility with Sanking plus a Sunstrike uh, set up with the um, Boro Strike. And as soon as Supposed to sound of a wheel will leave the lane before Ursa is level 6, they can be, there could be a counter gank. Hmm. From side of a mind's eye, and Ursa will be punished for that. That invoker is an interesting. Probably a signifying that you can go for either some sort of aggressive trial into. If you don't utilize the razor, the sanking, Walker Leon, have a really good time. The invoker still needs that. And till minute 15 or so, he's actually a useless hero, only sun striking. And let's be honest, sun striking is useful, useful with sanking or each commander, but these heroes, Doom, Ursa, Ursa, even Tinker actually has a. High HP, low armor, so the Sunstrike is not particularly well against them. Only really easy Maiden, and that's with a duel. Um, and Mind's Eye is going to have to execute this pretty, pretty well, and I, I'm going for Wheel completely. Seeing, after seeing that last pick of the Invoker, it's not really convincing. I would have been fine with the Puck, would have been fine with the Queen of Pain. Even something more lane dominating, like a Viper, or hell, even a, something like a Nyx and run Legion Commander at mid, I think would have been better. <laughs> this Invoker pick. We've already seen this exact same lineup by Mind's Eye in this exact same lineup against Wheel or something very similar uh, with the Invoker matchup with a, against a very early game, mid game matchup. And they definitely like, tried this did not work out well for them. Not because they don't, they can't play the Invokers, just that they really can't run the lineup that. Anyway. Well. That's quite understandable, yet I would say that they are going for an aggressive tri lane, it yep. feels like, with the uh, Sanking Razor plus Warlock, but I don't really like these aggressive tri lanes unless you are completely destroying the lane because you got two supports which are heavily relying on XP, especially a Warlock. He desperately needs to get his level 6. And I'm not sure how is it going to work out, to be honest. Well, it really does depend on how well. I mean, Razor's one of the better heroes we've already seen, especially in America. We're very featured in aggressive trilands, almost always. And the Americans, for some reason, really like that aggressive trilands, and they've been trying to use it with a lot. The Warlock is a laning hero, so when you can use him in aggressive trilands, it's probably the most aggressive you can put him in, because he cannot gank at all. <laughs> Has no stuns, really over, only offers an upheaval, so the Shadow Ward makes sure that the Razor can keep up against the Ursa. That's pretty good. The only thing, like you say, is the Sanking kind of wasting him over. It depends if the Sanking can you try to utilize these camps over here, maybe Sandstorm stacking, like the old Sankings used to play. That kind of a position for, that might work out. But yet again, Wheel should have an easier time, especially now that they've realized this aggressive trial is coming out, and they're moving Ursa down to the bottom lane. So that's going to be, that's going to be even more. Yeah, they dodged the aggressive trial lane. It feels like Legion Commander oh, will suffer quite a bit. And what is interesting for you? They're actually running a uh, Earthshaker. Or, which we haven't seen in too long, but when you're running aggressive trial lane, the reason why Doom is not playing position 4 nowadays is because 
terrible. It takes too much of your farm and doesn't do much with it. But if you run an aggressive tri lane, he has much more uh, leeway to gank the mid lane, and he's actually quite useful just with one spell taken away. And Mad Meng, as per usual, is going to go snipe the courier who has nothing protecting him. Little Llama versus Doom, and Satan will just sacrifice his animal for the board. That's Mad Meng also taking a clarity off the courier and getting the most gold you can get out of a kill. That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, Will are pr playing very greedy, in my opinion. Probably Doom won't be able to do that much still. He can get a lot of sustain in the in terms of the gold with his devour, yet he can for boots, so probably he will run around a lot. And he got a got a stun from a creep. And probably they will be in terms of a kill in a minute or two, but not that early. I'm not sure if they will be able to kill Legion here. There's no overpower nurse, so he's running away simply. Yeah, the Earth is particularly good against the Legion, which is why, yeah, probably the Warlock here. I mean, the classic Warlock Legion lane is okay. It still can't deal with the Earth too well, but. We know how strong Ursa is, any melee hero. And the typical thing Legion does, which is overwhelming odds, run up to the enemy hero and harass him with your insane base attack damage, is not going to work out against an Ursa that can just furious swipe you and consistently furious swipe you and even Earth shock you. As the press attack takes a bit too long, it's really to spell that slow. Earth shock. Again, you see the seven stacks of furious swipes and how Legion can't even make lane. Ah, even the Doom comes in. Oh, but. Uh, that's gonna be really hard lanes. I mean, Wheel Wheel has really read the enemy team's craft well, played accordingly. Yeah, I would say that the laning actually won uh, the early game at least quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, and the INA late is playing very dangerous in the mid lane, very aggressive. The second comes in, but he's pretty safe even with the call snap, sunstrike, annihilate. Wants to kill Fuzzy Sloth, we'll get it. Now nah, annihilate, <laughs> fighting against Baba Ganoush, and calmly just walks off. That's the issue with Zanking in the mid lane, Firstly, especially at level 1, actually deals very little damage, and Madman comes in with the Infernal Blade as well, and that means Baba Ganoush is going to be losing most of his health, 30 HP remaining, he'll just barely survive that. However, that was a failed gank, a first blood to the enemy mid on top of that, and he's a tinker. Oh, that was just not good for Mind's Eye whatsoever. Yeah, you don't want to feed the tinker, and also there is an Invis rune on the bottom lane, there was a kill on poor Legion Commander, even Wolok didn't manage to save his teammate, it, it's pretty sad that we're playing quite, they're playing both greedy and aggressive. Derp Derp is farming jungle, running around, making pools, taking runes. Same goes for the Mad Mank, probably. He's not that kind of a jungle sitter now. He got his boots, he's playing more aggressive. But they're punishing all the lanes except for probably top lane where Razor was left alone. But Ushik is level 4 already. He is constantly pulling, taking away XP from Razor. And it feels like all lanes are won for Will. Yeah, they're doing really well. I mean, the Earthshaker is actually one of the better heroes run against uh, Dwayne's Oscar in the bottom lane. Fast again, KVH doesn't have enough mana for the Earthshock, not gonna go in. The Earthshaker is one of the better heroes to run against Razor, because you can actually stop him, both, both him and your lane, to preserve really good lane control, just basically with your Fissure. That's a fantastic spell, just to make sure that you can not last it. And the Razor's gonna win your lane no matter what, so you might as well make him a useless hero in the passive trial lane. That's pretty good. On top of that, of course, putting a lot of pressure in the bottom lane, and getting another kill onto Oscar with the Infernal Blade, and of course, KVH's damage. Styling those phase boots and showing off that he can be actually much faster than Legion Commander as long as he activates that active. Well, if we will take a look at the last hits, so things are actually quite sad. Tinker is on top of the last hits. He actually got two points in the much of the machine, so that's. He will get some potential to farm stacks, yet I don't see any in the jungle. Probably I'm looking. Um, um, yeah, actually, there are stacks near the Ancients, a very sweet spot for both Inamansa and Tinker to farm on. Yeah. I mean, th this build that he went for, the, the Tinker build of 2-1-2 uh, or any points of March on Machines is fantastically good. Because, of course, you don't need the lane dominating build of the lane styled a bit more often nowadays, as you're going to win the lane regardless. The Invoker is really not that great of a laner, especially against a Tinker that's already winning because of the first blood and whatnot. So Tinker can go a bit more greedily, and then he gets his trial boots a bit sooner, as he need to rely on kills on the Invoker. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they continue to kill the Legion. One last time, he has a pressy attack, though, survives the net, and Mad Meng, fortunately, did not pick the right creep. Yeah, probably stunned with a little bit of damage. She is more convenient than Ensnare, yet... It's really hard to survive this for Oscar. Probably he wants to rotate to the jungle and let someone leech XP. And this hero is Razor. He still doesn't have his... Face boost, he can for magic one. Not that fast, and with a proper stun, he could die also. 
What's, what's interesting though is that um, Razor has been rotated to the bottom lane. Already pretty bad for Mind's Eye. When you run an aggressive tri lane with Razor, you definitely don't want to move him because you're so confident at the lane. And in this case, he didn't move bottom because he got all his necessary items. He's ready to attack. He moved bottom because bottom lane is going so badly for Legion Commander. They thought that we need to do something against this Ursa, who is snowballing out of control. And top of that, with all these rotations you have between the carries and the help they need to give the Legion, we have Fuzzy Sloth fighting alone against a Tinker, who's dominated the lane against him. 26 lasses to 16 and 18 denies. That being the biggest factor here. Those 18 denies make it so Fuzzy Sloth is a whole level and a bit more behind the Tinker. Meaning that now, easy kills onto the Invoker, you're going to delay his Akinus even more. You have a hero that's not effective in a lineup that's meant for the mid-game. It's just working wonderfully. Wheel is doing exactly what they should be doing uh, in this lineup, and Mind's Eye is losing control. The question is, what is forcing such a huge advantage in the nice for for the Tinker? He doesn't have that much of a uh, right-click attack. Invoker got much more with three points in Exot and double Null Talisman. Uh, what is this? the uh, some kind of an out skill or bad animation for invoker and better for tinker what would you say mm, I, I i'll be honest i don't find the tinker animation that great because it's just a bit deceiving the projectile speed is a bit better than the animation uh, it's definitely i would say it's more than anything the laser there right because the laser does make it much much harder to get last hits and i this sounds i mean it, this is a weird thing but uh if you are <laughs> taking contacts out uh if you use the laser you're actually much much more um, likely to take part in those denies because you have extra time where the invoker can literally not hit so if there's if there's a last hit that you want to get in the deny as well you laser the the invoker kill the la get the last hit first and then go for the deny and since the laser lasts such a ridiculous amount of time you can be able to take those denies much much easier and also much more concentrate on taking those denies because that's what tinker can do um it's also the fact that they haven't ganked him you know tinker the weakest thing he could have is when they gank him right he has no escape mechanism assuming you you gank him with health kill you but in this case, we have seen zero of those. Yeah. Yeah, they completely give up on the mid lane. There are too many heroes which need help. Probably Razor will be ganked a lot in the bot lane, and Derp Derp will rotate there. Uh, they know that there is a passive Legion in the jungle. Probably Oscar will rotate there. He is going to finish his magic wand and get a Kalim Blade after that, which will increase his farming speed. Avoganesh will leech XP on the top lane against Earthshaker, but I'm not sure if he will be able to get too close because Shaker is close very soon. We'll get his level 6 and with a Cap between gap like four levels between you and basically like I can say a carry this herbs like a carry, you may be scared to come close as a sanking level two. Yeah, it's just the sanking is also one of those heroes that's not particularly the best hero to gank mid lane, and your other support is not either. You know, warlock. What are you? What are you gonna do with this hero? Your supports are both level two on top of that, so your level three crystal maiden and and, and level three doom are doing much more than these two supports. On top of them being much uh, better of ganking the mid lane, and even further, once the sanking actually tries to gank you and Burrow strikes you with his deplorable range at level one, you're gonna be under tower almost always. And the crystal maiden can just rotate here with the TP, soak in the doom, and get easy kills on top of that, like we saw earlier when the sanking tried to gank and they actually turned that into a blood. So. It's just working much better for Wheel. It seems like they had a much more defined strategy. And Annihilate. Been waiting for this Tinker pick his whole life. And finally, finally can play that. So six months of just planning this out, you know. Okay, yeah, all been well. Yeah, Mad oh. yeah. yeah, he's fine. Just needs to be careful for the Sunstrike. Uses Devour and needs to choose the right path here. It doesn't feel like Fuzzy's Love will even try for the Sunstrike. He, it get it, he got it casted and... It does quite a bit of a damage to kill Doom, actually. It's pure damage, but he gives up on this idea. He is too focused on his mid lane now. And I understand it sometimes, because it needs a lot of coordination, plus there is no vision for Invoker. So he just focuses on getting catching up on his home. Yeah, I, I mean, getting a Sunstrike kill would be the best possible way to get that farm back, right? Especially when you're easily for you, especially because now the Tinker's going to start march on the Sheening for important camps. That's going to start increasing its form dramatically. But, if you're not too secure about it, you also don't want to pretend like you have Sunstrike, because the second you show off you have Sunstrike, then they know the amount of spells you have, to some degree, and you can't really attack the Tinker if he goes against you. I, this Invoker's playing really defensively. 
That would say in the, in the bottom lane, Formless is gonna die this time, for sure. One last hit by Ricky, or KVH will do the trick. Have a Ganoush now with a Sandstorm, might survive this. KVH actually withstand this, thanks to the Enrage and the Earthshock as well. Thanks to Mad Meng's Tornado, they got the right skill to kill the Sand King, and they didn't even need any detection. Good job, Wheel. Good job, dominating this bottom lane. And, I mean, you saw, we saw this earlier, right? We were saying, we keep saying they're winning the lanes and whatnot. It's not just that, it's that they forced a rotation on Razor when there was a level difference of one whole level between Razor. And even though Razor's a great lane dominator, Ursa's not the weakest hero against them. And on top of that, you are huge in items, which makes KVH a really, really good target, or a really bad target for Warlock. Don't, they don't have the effect to really stop the Ursa. Yep. And they're lacking quite a bit of a lockdown, Sun King is pretty underleveled, and they're going on Doom. Probably they will be able to kill him with the Razor and Sunstrike, any kind of a follow-up. And here it is, yet it oh. one pixel away, basically, and this is going to be a solo crest a Doom. He already finished his Medallion of Courage, and you mentioned at the very beginning that from side of a wheel, heroes are really lacking their armor against Razor, and here it is. Here is the Medallion of Courage, both working out well when you're playing uh, with Ursa and you gra uh, grant him some extra damage and also you're defending your teammates. Great pickup, uh, yet not that common as Doom. Yeah, I mean, he's playing a position for Doom, which is to begin with not common anymore, uh, at least for the, play, the hero himself. But <laughs> that solo crest build, build is pretty clever. Usually in a Doom, that's position 3. You can either go for Midas or for the talent, one of the two, uh, and you get an insane amount of gold and then power and then you kind of snowball into a shivas early and you you fix your armor problems but a solo crest fixes the armor problems for the whole team like you mentioned including for the ursa which to some degree doesn't have the greatest agility gain I offer in terms of armor later on in the game and of course you also get an insane offensive power with you early on and all the ursa needs to grab now is a blink and he's set to kill the razor and you don't really care if the purge comes at you from the razor or from the stable current because and you're, you have a Scorched Earth, you're super fast anyway, and you usually have Tranquil, so... The question is with which uh, Creep Doom will stick. Now he got uh, Unholy Aura on him to probably uh, lane more effectively, or it was just a random Creep and he chose the... Not the worst one, when you don't have much to choose from, you just get at least something. But is it going some kind to be additional lockdown as a Golem, uh, with uh, two additional Doom Links? after death or it's going to be some kind of an alpha wolf later on because back in the days everybody were hyped only for alpha wolf as a creep for them i mean i think right now when you get to the mid game soft mid game get the uh, and that's pretty useful just basically because it gives you the pushing power and the route to some degree not the best hero against a legion commander but besides that it's pretty useful the golem really loses use utility as the game fun is damages relevant anymore uh, and maybe maybe a centaur as well. It really does depend on Mad Meg's items a lot right now. Because if he gets a centaur without a blink dagger, for example, can't use it. The shockwave is not really that great of a spell if you don't have arcane boots either, because you can't spam it as, as often as you would like. Even the ensnare, right? So it's it's all depending on what Mad Meg wants to do right now. I, I just want to see what, what items he goes Because the auras is just utility later on in the game. Right now, Direwolf will do absolutely Oh, and there's a blink dagger on Earthshake. A formless is wow. being really careful. Probably they saw Dota the two on ward, so he needs to hide in the jungle. They know that there is an echo slam up, but probably Dota the two will give up on this idea. He got no TP. Maybe moving somewhere in the jungle and try to get a kill on the fuzzy slow or in the mid lane uh, would be the play here. Yep, the only hero left in the bottom lane is Abaganush, and there is a TP from Tinker. Oh, he already got his Boots of Travel, Travel's Plus, Soul Ring. That's going to be a disaster. Now all lanes are pushed, and on any lane where with two Blink Daggers, we'll, we'll decide to make a kill. Tinker will join. I mean, here you see the difference now in... in we already have all those core items, and oh, wait... I they go on to him, or that's the idea at least. But you're available, Baganush will be able to trick him. And now they're gonna TP to the top lane where there's a Dancing Crystal Maiden oh. who's gonna be killed immediately. But the Infernal Blade stops the TP from the Legion Commander and Formless. Meanwhile, under that rain cloud, they know exactly where he is. They can just follow him with a Scorched Earth, and eventually, Lord of Lightning will be turned into nothing but a pile of armor. That <laughs> <laughs> Mad Men got stuck there because the TPing Tinker, but he's happy finally. 
And Crystal Maiden for two cores, more than happy to do that. Oh, oh and here comes the Echo Slam. Is a kill for the Earthshaker, getting a bit of a gold for him. Even though it was just a support as an Earthshaker when you want to get your uh, items from moving fast, something like a Force Staff or a Blink Dagger, you, can, you should go for any kind of a kill. He's already level 9, and the next item is going to be Shadow Blade, I believe. For who, sir? For Earthshaker, he got for the power threats, he got his blink dagger. With Shadow Blade, he will get a great crit with his um, totem. So it will be easy to shut down someone like Wallach. Oh, meanwhile on the top lane, LC actually regretted. <laughs> oh, he dueled Ursa. Oh. Here comes the Doom on the sanking. They keep on chasing. Mad Bang is not letting him go. He got a heal creep on himself. Dying of Earth. She is burning <laughs> for <laughs> for Badoganush. He got trapped with his own creeps. Got a deny of yet said goodbye to his life. KPH managed to use his enrage, so duel wasn't successful even with the Sunstrike. Sad times. The static link, so that's a lot of, lot of damage out of the If he turns around, he could just maybe kill him, but the Tinker's around, deals way too much damage. The Frostbite oh. ends up killing the Poker Crystal Maiden. They want to stun the Formus out, and they get it with the Fissure. In the end, all they needed was the magical damage. Crystal Maiden for Razor again. Another trade that Dark Turb is willing to take. Wheel with 9k advantage. More than happy with how this game is going. Probably start seeing some of those next items. The Blink Dagger soon to on Tinker. And once you get that Blink Dagger on Ursa as well, there's no way you can outpush again. Heroes not only outpush but also farm safely. They're just gonna come at you from anywhere and absolutely destroy you. That's actually pretty interesting. That Crystal Maiden gone for Max Aura build to help her teammates all around. Plus he is farming um, a little bit more efficient. Plus there is an arcane boots, not that casual of a pickup oh, wow. on a Crystal Maiden. Mostly we will see something like a tranquil boots. Question is, was it going to be for this maiden? Is it going to be some transfer in uh, Lotus Op or Aetherlands, or is she simply Picked it up to help her teammates who doesn't have that much of a mana pool. Plus, her own spells are quite exp expensive in mana cost. Could be a potential Garden Greaves as well. Uh, the Doom doesn't seem close. From the Link. Oh, the Sunstrike is gonna miss. Don't know the tools in a TP. Did they not see? <laughs> that Sunstrike came much later after. Back. That was all right. That's just giving the benefit of the doubt and assume ball because it was not time so that he and they just. Uh, I, I hope I hope those Crystal Maidens going for Garden Greaves. I don't think the Doom wants to go for that quite yet, because he wants to go for more of an Initiator build, for more expensive items. The armor for the Garden Greaves is fantastic for your team as well, and my I cannot see another, much other reason. You really don't need that. That even if you're going for Lotus Orb, you don't need that. That okay. Uh, well, Aetherlands built on the Crystal Maiden is pretty good, I must admit. Also, all your heroes on your team are with a low mana pool, as I mentioned earlier. Plus. Gives a bit more ability to spam spells in the fight. Grants this kind of a sustain which you need to keep on pressure. Oh, Dota 2 jumps on the Sand King. There is an Echo Slam available. Question is, will he commit that? Oh, poor Derp Derp is unable to catch up yet. Kibi is just jumping in and destroying Frog. Oh, they found someone else. Who is the objective? And this objective is formless. He is burning and getting finished off with the Fisher. 2 to 14 with Invoker, we still didn't get his Aghanim Scepter. Probably if they will be able to hold on a little bit, get this Axe on Invoker, Invoker, it will be a little bit easier to defend high ground. So probably some possibility to get a comeback in the late game, if they will survive to this moment. Question is, will they survive to this moment? I mean, that's that's what we were talking about earlier, that's why I thought of the Invoker pick. Uh... That's a bit too strong of a word, but it was, was not a good pick because you wait too long for the Ags. Even if he does get the Ags now, imagine if he just farmed it with some Miracle. He would still have a really low-level Tornado and really low-level uh, well, uh, Cold Snap, Ice Wall. Those kind of spells are better as the game progresses uh, because of the slows and whatnot. And you don't really have that ability to stop the Ursa that easily because, again, of your lack of levels. And even though the Invoker is not really under-farmed, because all things considered, he's actually just a bit below Doom. But am saying there's a 16k thousand... Our 16k uh, net worth difference is pretty okay. Uh, the Invoker had 6,600, but he just can't farm anymore. And the Earths are just going to start snowballing out of control, take those towers. He might even go for Desolator. He is, actually. Even though you're saying about lack of control without this Tornado and Ice Wall, if you will take a look at Frog, yeah, cool. you will see that he 
Oh, Ursa is completely fine, it feels like. <laughs> feels like the fuzzy sloth is not fine uh, yet. Detection is not a thing. They didn't expect this, probably. And seems like things are fine. If you'll take a look at the Warlock, he got three points in upheaval, so running is insanely hard, especially to the high ground. So the only way for Ursa is probably jump in with Aegis, try to claw someone down, and there is no way back to him if a Warlock will be able to use his chaotic offering plus upheaval. Yeah, but they will just doom... kill him on the way back. That's why the Doom got blinked. That's, that's... Yep. This Warlock can't... I mean, the Doom usually would be reserved for the Invoker. Basically. But in this game, you don't really need to stop the Invoker. Oh, right now. Maybe the Legion if she comes really close to the duel, but you're not really concerned about her duel either. You have enough damage to stop it anyway. So right now, if you can stop the Warlock from using his ultimate and, like you said, his upheaval, and then you're set. That, that's a one team fight. And he has a Blink Dagger. There's no way this Doom cannot get the... out. Because there's no way you can actually stop his Blinking from happening, because Mad Men was the right positioning for that. And of course, you still have the Tinker. As long as the Doom gives vision, the Tinker can just kill off the Warlock really easily. It's a really difficult position to be in for my side. I mean, of course, they can still defend this because the Legion Commander is also really good. High ground and whatnot, but it's not like their lane is their their late game is particularly better than Wheels. They only have an Invoker and a Razor versus Ursa. And even. Yeah, Tinker is pretty insane in the late game, yet what is interesting, we'll already prepare the ground for the late game. Uh, Doom gone for Midas plus Devour bonus gold talent, oh, wow. and the farming speed as this is insane as Doom. And there is plenty of space to farm, so one of the lanes is going to be constantly pushed by Tinker. It doesn't feel like they can really catch him except for the Blink Tag on Legion Commander, but it's quite tricky unless you got a Tinker Ward on the high ground, and if you will be able to run through the much of the machines. So you either need to catch him immediately after he TPs, or Ironing LA just need to do something really retarded. Yeah, that was... I, I, it's gonna be hard for uh, for the guys at, at uh, Mind's Eye to really catch position, because they also don't have a way. Even with the Blink Dying and Leech Commander, she still needs a Blade. I believe so. Nobody else. And we're gonna go on the Doom, though. Mad Meg will be a good target. The Sunstrike comes out. The, already, the Earthshaker gets a solo kill against the Razor, but Mad Meg might just die against the Invoker. He has a Doom ready. We'll use it on the Invoker before he dies. The Shrine gets used to save him, but another two comes in. He uses the Yule Scepter onto the Invoker, trying to kill him off. He still has the Fissure. The damage is enough, and the Invoker will go down to the Doom damage. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, we see the push continuing by the guys at Wheel, trying to take this Tier 3 tower down, but the Upheaval is not gonna let them. Well, Kvage was the only member of Will on the bottom link. He almost managed to kill Frog. Yet Baba Ganush managed to help his uh, teammates, scared the Fuzzy Wuzzy away. And with upheaval, you, you saw how slow that Ursa was. And even though there is not that much items on either Razor or Invoker, it feels like if Kvage will play two Conquer, he will be easily punished for this, as long as he doesn't have his BKB. And question is, will he go for BKB even? Maybe some kind of uh, Aghanim Scepter could be better, but there is plenty of lockdown from side of a mind's eye. I mean, the Axe is usually better. I would say it's usually better against like Legion or Warlock because they care. But if you're up against this upheaval Warlock, which is not particularly the build, but I guess he's noticed by now that you, you might just want to go for a beacon. Try to stop all of the damage. The Sanking to some degree is also a very vulnerable to just the Ursa. He could just go for both at this point. He did go for later, so he has a lot of damage. Not like he needs many more items. Just about pushing. Right, so. I think the options are very open. I want to say either one is bad. Maybe Basher actually on Ursa. Ooh, that's Why do you a need a BKB if you can just stun them, perma stun them, and kill them off? A plane, in one bash. Shaker, let's go down. Maybe you'll set to save him. Comes back with a fissure, but no, there's no way he's surviving that. <laughs> there was a hopeful dream of the Yule Scepter, but. That's a, that's a dead earth shaker. In the end, it seems like Wheel is doing the same thing they did last time. They were winning by a lot. They're starting to sacrifice some cores by being in difficult positions and not entirely playing as a five man squad yet. Make sure they don't fuck okay, this. Yeah, the five kill streak uh, again for Razor, probably it's not as scary as a five kill streak for uh, someone like Invoker. Yet Kivich is trying to kill for. Formless has carried him away with the Static Link plus Tornado for Fuzzy Sloth to secure the survival of his carrier. I get him Scepter plus Hand of Midas. Question is, what's the next objective on Invoker? Maybe some kind of a, a Yule Scepter to get more control over Ursa or Lincoln Sphere to avoid Doom. Yet Lincoln Sphere is too much of a um, too much of a gold. And actually, Derp Derp gone for Helm of Dominator and got a trustworthy. Hot Aww. Yeah, I mean, that that helm is really useful with the Doom, because now you can, even if, with the catapult aside, because 
guess why not. But uh, the catapult aside, you get two cards now. One for the entire Alpha Wolf on the Doom, because he wants to hit the card, and then you get something like a Wild Kinner's idea. You want Fuzzy Sloth in a difficult position, or in a bad position, and go by the Earthshaker alone. It shouldn't really happen when you're losing, you really have to be much safer than this. And KVH in the bottom lane just wants to go for another solo kill, perhaps on the Warlock. Yeah, he... That's just his scan. Like the Warlock just barely got up. Find Oscar instead. KVH walks in, sees Oscar, they see his, his blink, and they have to stop his TP somehow, but they're not going to predict his blink properly. Legion Commander will just be alive. Two unfortunate guesses by KVH, yet high ground is still standing. It's already minute 22, but. Invoker, uh, who is being caught off guard on top lane, and he died already three times. It's not that much to, like, if to compare to every everyone from his team, like uh, Reizu or Legion Commander, still get some hopes. Derp Derp probably could get killed here. There is an Oscar with duel, and that's a dead Crystal Maiden. There is a Sunstrike, finally, dual damage. Instead, they're trading for Frog. A lot of the HP got taken away by Dota. The two I need without mana completely. Here comes the Babaganoush. It feels like they're turning the fight finally. Yet there is no, there is an epicenter, but Sanking is pretty low on mana, so he's running away. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Kivage with this later try to take a tier three. Sadly, for my side, there is no Treant on their side, so nobody will heal off the support towers. And as long as they are trading. Derp derp who for whomever in another part of the map towers are going to slowly fall down. And there was no KVH in this fight, so probably things could have been entirely different. Yeah, th that was I think that the KVH going down bottom that was a pretty clever choice. He had the desolator so he can push a bit faster and then he can just do some damage on the tower. Sacrificing like a crystal maiden, which is what they lost overall was not that big a deal as opposed to taking the tower to just what Especially just the tier lines. If you can take down this shrine over here, you're able to actually go onto the Rotan much, much safely. And even though it is quite safe right now, you are still fighting against a lot of team fight. And we see the Invoker actually going down in the bottom lane. They just caught him out with a Doom and then killed him. Again, Invoker in difficult position and difficult for himself, of course. Not F. KVH will now use this time to take the Roshan. He also got a double damage. And there is a haste run right next to the Roche pit. The luckiest days for KVH. The Roshan will go down really easily, and with that, the Haste Rune, they can actually go, go down to the bottom lane without much of a loss. Oh, they're gonna give it two, because... Fast, and with this, they're probably able to take a tower at the very least. They still have their uh, Echo Slam ready. The Doom might have been used up, but they have the Freezing Field Echo Slam, and the Invoker is still dead. So they're gonna force a buyback over the time. They kill the Courier, don't have two, great job, but he's been stunned out, and now the Plasma Field deal a bit of extra damage, but the Haste Rune, they really can't stop him. KVH kind of wants to just jump in. He goes for the bottom tower, that's the objective at the very least for now, and they divide themselves slightly so they can actually put pressure in two lanes at once. Tinker will be coming back very soon. KVH walks into the high ground, goes into the tower, Burr strikes out to stop him, and now the Tornado as well. Can they initiate somehow with the upheaval, the M EMP as well, the Colts have been kept a spell because he used the enrage a bit too early. The Madman comes up, stops the upheaval, the duel to Madman. He doesn't have enough tank to survive this, or will he? The Sun Strike will come the last second, and the winning duel will go to this Leech Commander, KVH. Managed to survive this onslaught as he evades the last hit from the tower and does not lose the Aegis just yet, but they did lose the Doom. And this tier 3 keeps standing with 44 HP, still alive, and no shrines can be taken. It Unless feels like the there two. was some... Yeah, I got a Korea kill. Yay! <laughs> Well, it feels like the fight was simply poorly coordinated and with this random jump in probably they should have been more careful. There was no doom oh, on right. Warlock. Yeah. It feels like Will are suffering from the same issue they are most suffering from when they are playing against uh when they're playing against Thunder Awaken and Thunder Awaken can't crack the high ground. And the high ground defense for Mindsai is pretty good. So unless you got a Lucky jump, either by Doom or Earthshaker, you can only pray for something good finally happening in this high ground attack. Use double the Echo Slam as well. The Stop Legion Commander and the Earth Save is even getting the cheese. The KBH is healed completely. Formless is not going to die as well as the Freezing Field comes out. That's a great zone. Now they can't do anything. Annihilate comes in with a Dagon as well. Wants to kill Mr. Frog and will do so as Fussy Sloth is, is sent to his base in a coma. And a wheel 
is able to take two structures down, the two racks, and of course the tier three, and are looking for more. The second tier three they might fall to their hands as the Invoker, the only surviving core here, can't really do much to stop the Ursa from taking down their last building in the mid lane. Question is, what can you do as a mind's eye in between your big alts? There is no epicenter, there is no golems. You can't really stop this Ursa who already got his BKB and probably there's soon going to be some kind of a GG. Probably they're still hoping to kill Dota the two. 60 seconds. Oh, it's going to be in a dead Earth shake. It feels like yet Annihilate is punishing the bullies. Comes to duel on him. Time to defend his teammate. Dota the two. It feels like completely fine. Well, Epicenter committed for the kill. <laughs> well played by Dota the two. Flaming for Annihilate. He's buying back to defend KVH. He's still got his Aegis. Aegis Bob to do him on Razor. He can't really do anything. Derp, derp. Oh, dropping too low on the HP, but it doesn't matter anymore. Minus three from side of a mind's eye. Good game being called. And 27 minute game, 9 to 26. Good laning stage, a little bit of rolls, a little bit later from side of a wheel, but good game all in all. Here, we will absolutely destroy their competition, uh, making it so that the guys at Mind's Eye will have to rethink their strategy coming to the second game. They pick an experimental draft to some degree and still do very well with it. Let's see if Wheel can take the second game of the best of two as they've done with the first one, already securing themselves one point. Let's see if they can do the second one as well. This has been the Pro Dota Cup American Region, sponsored by Xbet. Hope you've enjoyed the cast. My name has been the Swordfish here with Vata. Feel free to follow us on Twitter if you did enjoy, and if not, feel free to flame us in the chat, because why not? And we will come back very soon with the next game of the day between Mind's Eye and Wheel. Just give us a couple minutes and enjoy some tunes while you wait. See you guys then. for eSport and live betting. Unique gaming lines for old eSport.